Hello, welcome back to Tech Artist 41. I'll be talking about the INL Programmer slash Dumper version 2. This is the April 2018 revision, uh, and this is what it can convert to ROM. So it has six ports on it. It can convert Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, NES, SNES, uh, Famicom, Super Famicom, Genesis, Master System, and N64. Uh, I cannot, uh, I'll go over a brief summary, and I do mean brief, even though this is an hour and 24 minutes long, but this video is mostly over this, will be over this device and what it can do. Uh, I will not be going over 32x Genesis cartridges, mostly because I do not have them, nor a Famicom or NES or Super Famicom. Uh, I do not own those, so I do not go over them. But if you do, uh, and this is a win um, Windows tutorial, not a Linux tutorial. So here's the GitLab page from Infinite Nest Lives. And yeah, I'm downloading the hex editor right now just for the N64 ROMs later, so don't worry about that. Uh, that won't matter until a little bit later, but you do need to download the Notepad++ because it will help when trying to change some of the coding within within all these scripts. And you will be doing C programming even though you are not uh, doing so much of uh, coding in C. Uh, there are just a few additional things within the batch program that you do that you normally would not do within uh, the batch program. And all the batch program is run from a .bat file. But you do need to download it from the GitLab page, and I will leave a link to this down below, just so that you can get the master file and uh, make sure this runs properly. But all you really need is one .bat file, and it just change the script every time. Uh, later in this episode series, I will show you how to make a menu, but at this time, I am only showing you the base of what this device can do, and uh, and then our our also attach a menu down below as well, a, a, a file that has the menu already set, but in a, a simpler term. And you can always update this as much as you want. The only thing that will be updated eventually will be that each and every script will eventually become automatic. Oh, and uh, by the way, if you want to download save ROMs, uh, this is not the device to do it at this moment. Uh, the only thing you can download are the uh, ROMs themselves, not the save files. So if you do want save files downloaded from your Game Boy or Game Boy Color ROMs, even the Game Boy Advance ROMs, <laughs> this is not the device that can do that. So I, not at this particular moment. And not everything is automatic. The only thing that is automatic is the SNES. So now we wait as I go through and show you uh, what batch can do. And, and I do use some of these commands, but not all of them work just the same on Windows and Linux. So as I will say, this is a Windows tutorial, not a Linux tutorial and I haven't gotten the Mac side to work either so I've tried all three systems 
I've had errors on Linux, I've had errors on Mac, so I stuck to Windows for now. And this is also what I created too. So before you do anything, um, even plugging in your device, what you need to do is uh, follow the first part of this uh, and install, well not install, but deactivate the driver enforcement in Windows. And this happens from Windows 7 and in Windows 10. So I would just follow these settings. You can pause this video at any time and to me it won't matter uh, unless you do want to hear a little banter but it's not really necessary. It, as long as you can just jump around it, it's fine. And I left chapter markers for all of this just so that you can do just that and or just look at a what you need to do right here. But I will leave down a file, a couple of files down below just so that you can just get started and you don't have to do much of the coding and scripting and all of that. Uh, everything's already set. I will create a menu system to do all that for you so you don't have to worry. So now we wait for myself to catch up. <laughs> uh, the only thing I don't quite know that much about is the NES. I do not know how to convert that ROM. Uh, I have to figure that out quite later. And the fact that Boot God is uh, what I tried to open on my computer, but to no avail. Uh, I would like to see the right size for my games for the NES, and I only have a couple, so it, to me it didn't really matter as much. But for many different people, uh, they would know exactly what to put. So if you do have any comments down below, would be a good uh, a good way for me to update some of these tutorials and if I uh, if you do get back to me on how to convert an NES ROM correctly because I have some of the two uh, I have the dual the uh, dual game one that has Mario and Duck on, on it so I would like to convert that Let me just see where I'm at in this video of things. Okay, I'm not there yet. But, yeah, I'm just cleaning up my desktop a little bit. Uh, and RetroArch is the type of emulator that I normally use when playing any of these games. And any, well, any of these ROMs on the computer. But you will not have to if you use RetroArch, it has mostly everything that you need on it. Uh, there may be a... No? As far as I know, it, that's what what works best for most people. And don't worry about this mini GW. It, unless you're programming a game, it, you really won't need it. So. Yeah. Just cleaned up my desktop. <laughs> uh, and I don't like folders within folders, so I drag it out a little bit. Do a hat trick right there. Then it gets rid of that folder. Uh, that didn't used to happen. Uh, you used to have to delete that folder too, so. Eh, updates within Windows. It helps. <laughs> so. See the Windows driver package folder? That's what you'll have to do to install the driver. And make sure you download the correct driver for your system. Uh, or you can just click the install driver.exe package. <laughs> and it, it'll work just the same. So just 
be careful because uh, you may have to re-plug your device back in. So yeah, uh, that's the first thing that you do. Uh, the second thing you do is create a bat file within the host folder. The host folder is one of the folders that you will need that you will be accessing regularly. The second thing would be to create a folder where you store your ROMs. And you can name this whatever you want. It it really doesn't matter. It's your choice, so have at it as you will. You can also name name the bat file any name that you want to. Uh, I just call it main.bat, um, even though it's a text file at the moment. They just regard myself, but uh, that's past me. Uh, uh, th th this video just took longer than I intended it to be, so that's one of the things why it took so long for me to release a video this week. Well, the last couple of weeks. So right now I'm just... Uh, downloading Notepad++. Make sure you download the correct version for your computer. Uh, there are certain versions that will work on certain computers, so, so just make sure that you have either a 64 or 32-bit system for Windows to download any of this to your computer. So. That's mostly it. Oh, oh, uh, the other thing is uh, you will have to have an administrator account on your computer to run any of this uh, software, well, any of these scripts. So if you do not have full access, then you you can't um, run this. So in a uh, advised to children or uh, their guardians, just make sure that uh, you have them in the room or uh, if it's your own computer then you're an administrator already. So yeah, uh, the, also in this video there are some, when we get to the Game Boy Color there will be some sl a couple of flashing happening and that is for the ROM only so uh, and it, there are a couple of issues that happen in the ROM so oh and right now all I'm doing is updating the firmware on my device uh, it, it's really not necessary right now uh, but unfortunately my self doesn't quite know that there is an error that occurs so uh, too bad for him uh, he'll find out in a second but yeah it, this is mostly just to update the ROM well the firmware on the device in case in case anything gets updated but as of this moment, I am running the latest version of the folder of the master file. So no need to worry on that. It, it is as up to date as possible. Uh, I'm just doing this for your benefit. And at echo off, just make sure you put in that. And the title is not really necessary so if you don't need the title well you don't need the title at all it it just changes something in the uh, title bar at the top so it'll say something else but every time you run the well it won't say something else every time you run the script but it'll say something different than the normal program name at, at the top so hey whatever works for you it 
Right, I'm just grabbing the script here, so uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I know why uh, that script didn't work. Uh, so I I have to edit my own script too. So, but this is just to update your device. Nothing more. Nothing less. Uh, this uh, particular part. So here's the error that pops up. This just means that your USB is either an incorrect place, because it could find the actual device, but the program could not access it. So either the device is turned off, the device is uh, plugged in, or unplugged. Uh, but if it's plugged in, then it's in the wrong type of port. So just make sure it's in either a 2.0 or a 3.0 port. So this is actually what should happen if it's running correctly. And of course it has errors after, but that's besides the point. It, it, it did it correctly. So next, what you do as always, well, no, uh, so this is what I'm talking about changing the script a little bit. You just take out the dashes. And there you go. You can uh, update the firmware. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is also within the scripts folder within host. Uh, and that's where all the other script folders that you'll need. Uh, and those script folders are mappers for for each individual console. So yeah, so it, this is mostly what it's doing is it's uh, taking uh, the correct firmware from the firmware folder on the main part of the master folder and it's uh, installing that onto the device yeah it is a beautiful device uh, I will not say that it it's working incorrectly but And I've known a lot of years of work went into this. It is a device that it will show the test of time. For at least until everything's converted and uh, there's no need. All right, now that we finished the update, so next we'll be moving on to the Game Boy's, well, the Game Boy uh, cartridge slot. <laughs> yeah, uh, so what you'll be needing to do is just make sure that dash C, which is the console, is GBA, the um, dash M, which is the mapper, which helps encode the file into the correct in, into the correct way so that the computer can read it and dash k is the kilobyte size of the file and there there's another way to do this but this is the simplest way that you can do this without having to mess with a well not really it it's simpler in the way that you can see everything without having to go and look through a bunch of code. So, uh, and dash 
D is the location that the file is dumped to. And you can put it in any location on your computer. It will not matter. But uh, you, depending on, on where it is, uh, you'll have to sort of get the whole file linked to that location. Uh, you'll have to get the whole header. So better just to follow this and to put it in a folder so that you don't have to do any of that. So, yep, we're just looking at the script, changing the folder to the correct folder. Of course, this is from my other version, so there will be a couple of different uh, things. So. so here we go. It'll take a few moments for it to download and yeah, GBA games take quite a while. Not as long as uh, N64, but they do take some time. It, most of this is done in real time, but uh, not all of it. But also, yeah, we'll get back to that in a second. <laughs> Finishes, then we go to me placing in the cart. There we go. Yeah, I, I sped this up a little bit too. So <laughs> it, uh, it's mostly because it took way too long for me. Well, yeah, just a little bit. So see that light? That's what I meant by turning on the switch. Uh, the light will come on. So, and, and then it'll follow this. So. Well, I, I don't think I said that before, but I've done this so many times I've lost track. <laughs> All right, so now that we have our Samurai Jack uh, ROM downloaded, from our cartridge, we test it out. So there are many different emulators that you can choose, and I, I prefer RetroArch as my main emulator, but uh, for testing, I use a bunch of different emulators. Don't ask me why, I just do. So, also rename the game every single time you change it. Or, or later on try to figure out what type of file to uh, uh, well what type of way to make it so that it renames it itself or if they update the script or or let you know that too so and I'll go over this through the multitude of tutorials that I will will eventually come and produce so uh, and none of this is sponsored anyway or anyhow by infinite nest lives this is just one of the games that has a bunch of uh, <laughs> titles <laughs> on it oh and uh, just so that you know uh, after this uh, the gba the gbc game uh, does have flashes, so uh, there is a seizure warning. Alright, the game works. But there is a seizure warning after this message. Rename the game. Always.
So now we've inserted the NASCAR uh, challenge. So just for warning, uh, when I do run this game on the computer, uh, I will run it once and there is a seizure warning for anybody who has uh, um, issues with, uh, with strobing or flashing on the screen. So. This is just a warning to those who do have it, and uh, just be careful when uh, when downloading these ROMs from the actual cart onto the computer, because uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs have a bunch of flashing within them, so just be careful, <laughs> especially. At Make sure that they're using the correct emulator too, because that also has an issue an issue that occurs when the emulator itself is causing more flashes than what's actually needed for the program to run correctly. And I'll show you the difference between Magnafin and uh can't think of the name right now, but it'll be between Magnafin and a slightly better version of something that makes it run correctly. So within the scripts folder, that's what it's running. So, and I like to use the MBC1 mapper because it works the best out of all the mappers that I've used for this uh, for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. All the other ones, the ROM commonly, uh, I haven't gone working correctly and even though they should work correctly, they do not. So I've been using the MB, MBC1 mapper. So, uh, we changed the console to DMG, the mapper to MBC1, and of course one does look like an L. That's, if you want to change the, script, um, the font of this program, you can, uh, but that's just what the font looks like. So in most, Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs are 1024. So that is the file size that you do need to make these particular ROMs. Uh, there are a few different ROMs that do prefer you make it 2048 like a, like any of the Pokemon games they are 2048 in size. No matter what ROM they are, they are 2048 if they're Game Boy Color or Game Boy, they're 2048 in size. Just make sure you set that for the kilobyte size, the dash K that you see there. Even though I've only tested on one of them, but it should work for all of them. And Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs they don't take that much time. This is running in real time right now, so that's how long it takes for a Game Boy ROM to dump the ROM. I just wish that emulators had a rumble function, because this game has a rumble function! <laughs> Sorry, I, I really love the rumble function on, the, uh, on this particular game, and just a warning again, there are flashes within this game. So you have problems with strobing or flashing of any sort. This is your last and final warning uh, before I run this particular game. So uh, 
Yeah, the Visual Boy Advance is the other emulator that I will be using. But uh, Minafin is the first one, and it doesn't work very well with Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and Game Boy Color ROMs. So that's Minafin, and um, I'm sorry about the flashing in that one. That one has more flashing than what it normally runs in the Visual Boy Advance. Uh, that is the, if you're testing anything out, uh, it's better to use that one instead. And there is more flashing, so uh, be wary of that. This particular game just has a bunch of flashing, so it. Yeah. But less flashing. Still flashing. Yeah, I failed to qualify, but normally I would get past that point. But I'm only just showing you the difference between the Visual Boy Advance and the Minafin uh, emulators. Uh, so, yeah, depending on which em emulator you use for each ROM, Well, I moved on to Sega Genesis, <laughs> so, but make sure you use the correct emulators. So we're going to convert so Sega Genesis. Uh, I do not have any Master System ROMs, uh, even though it will say Master System when it shows in Command Prompt. But there we go. The BL... B run switches on. So. Oh, and make sure you don't uh, mess with that uh, ground to 12 volt uh, via. That can cause issues when you're doing any of your N64. So. 
But besides that, <laughs> we have, so yeah, make sure to change it every single time you do any of this. And I'm just putting file extensions after each one, just so that I don't have to change it later. And it makes it a bit faster. So now we go on to Sega Genesis. Woohoo! All right, so Sega Genesis will show the ROM size, so you do not have to worry, and all you have to do is run run it through a command prompt or the batch file that we're I'm messing with right now. Right, I'm trying to look for all of this, so <laughs> yeah, uh, this is one of the things that I've created, and I create a simple script like this for for you to just go ahead and run. You will need to change a few files on it, well, a few things within the actual database of it, and there is a lot of information in that. Um, <laughs> I won't make it this extensive, but uh, the Game Boy I will leave alone. The GBA I will change, uh, and you'll just have to set the size. Well, the GBA I will leave alone too. Uh, the only thing that I will change is the uh, Sega Genesis. Pretty much just the Sega Genesis, <laughs> and well, the Sega Genesis and the any NES. If you want to go ahead and mess around with that, but yeah, that's the huge file I've created. It it is sixteen kilobytes in size, <laughs> and all text, and all menus and such. But I'll see if I can find a simpler way for all of that so it's not as hard for you to do everything. So yeah, I'm just searching for the Genesis the Genesis script that we will need to run, so yeah. <laughs> So Genesis and Sega Master System, you can name them whatever you want. It, either a .gen file or .sms. But some emulators will only accept .sms and not .gen. Uh, but they are the same ROM. It doesn't matter if you have a Genesis or a Sega Master System. Uh, they are both the same exact ROM, so you do not have to do this multiple times for your Sega Genesis and Sega Master System ROMs. You only have to do it once. If you have the game for one, then do it for just that one. <laughs> Don't do it twice. There's no need, unless the Sega Master System has some extra stuff. Uh, but most likely it's it'll be the same ROM uh, on most cases. There may be some ROMs that do have extra stuff, but other than that, no. So we change the console to Genesis, and uh, and then the mapper we don't need anymore because the Genesis has its basic mapper that there's no need to change it so we just change the kilobyte size to 512 because that is what the size of this ROM is and it will show in a second I did say a second but it may take a few minutes or or so just to have it run. <laughs> well, on my past, on my past self, I'm just waiting as he catches up. 
but yeah. For this particular ROM that we're running, which is Sonic the Hedgehog, it is 512 in size for its kilobyte size. Uh, it is one of the easier things to run and one of the smaller games to run. And Genesis don't, doesn't take very long either, so. And this is also running in real time for Genesis. I do not slow any of this down. But we do need to test the game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a success. Uh, and you see where it says, where I have my mouse cursor right now? It says ROM size on that line. That is the exact ROM size for this particular cartridge. So, and ROM just means the game. So, yeah, that's the particular ROM size. And that's what the size of this game is. And if you do it at a different size, well, Genesis doesn't like that so it gives you nothing out of your effort of ripping the wrong at the wrong size <laughs> so yeah uh, you'll see that later in this in this tutorial slash video <laughs> but there we go we right I forgot to change the extension we change it to gen uh, or SMS depending on what emulator you are actually running at the time so just make sure you're running the correct emulator then you can right now I'm just naming it <laughs> so yeah So now we get the file and we run it with Mednafin. And Mednafin works best for this, for any Genesis, Sega Master System, 32X game, uh, even uh, Sega CD. Uh, I don't have those either, but uh, the 32X and the Sega CD I do not have. Uh, I do want to get later on, but money is always tight, as we always say in my family. Well, tried to say. But yeah, see how it says check some okay, dump success. So that just means you correctly converted your ROM back into its own digital file on your computer to the correct size of its original ROM size. So yeah, and don't worry about the banks. So to me, I just see that as a loading screen. <laughs> uh, and if you do want to watch it, you can watch it, but some some games actually take quite a while and depending on the system you have even even if it's a fast system it will take the same amount of time because it's trying to read it from the cart so <laughs> can you really blame it <laughs> yeah just looking for the emulator there we go don't worry about my files.
Alright, so the game works. Now we rename it. Oh, right. Alright, next is Aladdin. Why are we doing Aladdin? Well, the reason why I'm doing Disney's Aladdin is because it's a different size than Sonic the Hedgehog. And I'll show you what happens when you set something at the incorrect size for Sonic. Well, not Sonic, but the incorrect size for any Genesis ROM. It'll say check some mismatch. Bad dump. Try cleaning cartridge connector. So before you do that, change the ROM size and make sure your cartridges are clean from the get-go so or the beginning <laughs> in a layman's terms so now that we've saved the file and changed it we do this again and this is running in real time as well so now that we have it set to the correct size you won't see that black screen happen for the Genesis game. And it says check some OK, dump success. That just means it is the correct size and it was dumped properly. Also make sure that you do not uh, click on the command prompt while it is doing this process because then you will not know when it actually finishes and you'll have to hit enter and then it'll re it'll load the script real fast <laughs> so uh, just make sure you uh, hit enter on the command prompt uh, if you accidentally click onto the command prompt and not on the title bar So yeah, uh, yeah. I'm just deleting the game name dot C, um, Game Boy Color because <laughs> uh, that's wrong. Alright, the game works. And you're probably wondering why uh, the image is blurry 
for some of these games and some of the games are sharp well that's just the emulator it has nothing to do with the ROM at all so uh, yeah I forgot the extra D has nothing to do with the ROMs whatsoever. Right, uh, yeah, I'm just going back over what I've just mentioned that setting the ROM size to the wrong size, it, it, it has issues, so. And it tends to work improperly. But yeah, this is still downloading Aladdin, so. Sorry, I have so many different windows. <laughs> Trying to search around my desktop, um, well, my computer. <laughs> yeah, that's my fault, sorry about that. Yeah, not that, I just need that. So yeah, it it just gives you a black screen for any of these types of ROMs. It, it, it does say check some mismatch bad dump, but that just means you need to set it to the correct size before you do anything else, uh, unless your cartridge is filthy. So you may need to clean it out with the Conswab and isopropyl alcohol uh, just to make sure that the name well just so that everything comes up or it's not seated correctly in the cartridge slot so those are the couple of things that you might want to see and make sure that everything is properly seated the cartridge is clean and uh, your table's not shaking about. Well, uh, yeah, a couple of things I said. But yeah, and just make sure you set the actual size to all of this to the correct size. So now we're moving on to, well, not just yet. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We don't move back to DMG. We're <laughs> actually I accidentally went a little too far on there, or did I? Well, no matter. Yeah, just make sure that everything is correct size and. Uh, you shouldn't have any any problem whatsoever. Yeah, so I'm just getting ready for the DMG uh, or the Game Boy slash Game Boy Color in the next part of this. And I did break it into sections just to make it easier for you to follow through. So. Yeah, uh, just make, uh, and also make sure that you select the correct size for each thing. Uh, Game Boys, Game Boy and Game Boy Color, they are 1024 and 2048 in size. Uh, the 2048 is only used by some ROMs, not all. All right, let's see. Okay, so now we move on to our next part. Uh, this is uh, this is going back to Game Boy Color and Game Boy. Yeah, I'm just showing you the different cartridges. So we have the GBA cartridge on the right, the far most right, 
then we have SNES, then NES, then N64, Genesis, and Famicom. So those are the cartridge slots. I just like to have them all, it, just in case I get something in the future. But I do have most of the systems, I just don't have a Famicom system in any sort or any way. I may want to receive one later on in life, but not right now. So here's the Pokemon ROM that I was pertaining to. So this specific ROM needs to be 2048, not 1024 for the kilobyte size. And Alright, there we go. So, that means it's working correctly. It has the 2048. <laughs> now, let me show you what hap happens when the Pokemon ROM is, rec well, transferred in the incorrect way. So, it, and all of this is running in real time. I don't know why that paste shortcut thing keeps on popping up. <laughs> That was not my intention. Anyway. <laughs> so, why am I minimizing that? That shouldn't be minimized. I should just hit enter. <clears throat> okay, uh, so now we run the ROM again. And it should be incorrect. So, yeah, there's that. The ROM will be incorrect. And you'll see what happens. You, you might not be able to escape the room, but or interact with anything, but you'll be in the room. <clears throat> oh, right, right, Minnafin. <clears throat> it doesn't work very well with that particular game when it's done incorrectly. And sorry, it was on a different, well, no, I moved it from a different screen. Don't mind me. Everything looks fine, right? You'll see. What just happened? What's the F? Oh, and sorry about earlier, my uh, throat got uh, a little clogged. The day is the F. <laughs> it did not finish. His name shall be Gold. I can't escape! What? <laughs> uh, well, you're forever locked into the room. You're stuck within the dimensions. Can't interact with anything. <laughs> I wouldn't mess with your friends by doing this. It even though it is quite funny. You are forever locked into the room. But yeah, that's why when setting it to 2048, as I showed you before, and we'll show you again in a second, that 
that is the correct ROM size for this particular ROM set. There are certain games that it will do correctly if it's 1024, but there are also certain games that it will not. <clears throat> So just make sure you have the correct size for each and every ROM, because it is important. And you could also check this in the hex editor too. Just as a side note. Ah, oh, beautiful. There we go, we've escaped the room. <laughs> the room that we were locked into. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, but that's what happens if you do certain ROMs in, in a certain way. This one's just my favorite because you just get locked inside a room <laughs> with no escape. You have no hope. But yeah, <laughs> it's one of my favorite sort of uh, ROM incorrectly dumped. Alright, so next we have SNES. So the SNES is the easiest one to do because you don't really have to type much script into the actual bat file. Uh, well, it's a line, of course, but no more. Uh, it's just slightly less than any of the others because They've done a really good job on making it so that you do not have to type in any values, no mappers, just have to tell the location of the actual ROM. So yeah, that's basically what I'm saying here. It, well, said in the past, but I wasn't recording the audio. <laughs> uh, sorry for him, but... Uh, that's past me his fault, but hey, what can you do? But yeah, there are certain ROMs like the GBA video, which is 32 megabytes. Uh, you just have to make sure that you set it to 32. It would be 1024 times 32 to get the correct size for the GBA video cartridges. Uh, I don't know about any of the NES Classics or the SNES Classic uh, cartridges, those I do not own or have, so I have no way of testing those out. But yeah, this is, what I'm showing you right now is my menu script of all this, and I will simplify it very easily and I just included as an attachment in this uh, video along with some of my instructions of what to do whenever you need to do anything to download or well just to start this sort of project in any case 
but yeah. Uh, Sega Genesis, all that. But I want to make sure it's all in one file. Easy to access, and there's really no need for much of a difference on, well, n much of a change on anything. So we take away the kilobytes and the mapper, and all we need is the console. So we just change that to S NES. That's it. We save the file. Well, we save it and make sure that the game name dot gbc is changed to sfc not gbc as my self is just catching up <laughs> but yeah there are many different extensions to each and every one and i will list them in other other videos sorry my my speech is slightly impeded at this moment. I, uh, it's mostly stuck with, between a yawn and a, and a gasp. So, <laughs> yeah, it happens. But yeah, you will need the exact type of emulator to run all these programs. You can just use RetroArch to test out everything just to make sure everything works properly. Just make sure you have each core downloaded. And uh, I'll slightly go over that in a second. Just, well, I'll go over that not in this video, but in the videos prior to this one on that specific note. Uh, and. For those videos, I will be going over just an individual cartridge slot on on that small little device made by Infinite Nest Lives. And as I said before, I am not sponsored in any way, but uh, they are a good a good provider and well a good company uh, I don't know what they are at this point but they are a they are good people in order to get back in touch with anybody and the only thing is that uh, they seem to be taking a hiatus at this moment because of COVID but I do wish them well and I hope they get back to fixing up their script to make it so that everything ends up being automatic uh, for most of the time being. And this does take a little bit of time, so uh, I will speed up um, a lot of this, but this in particular I will not. So the nice thing about the SNES ROMs though is that it determines the size by reading the ROM well, reading the cartridge, and then from the cartridge, it tells the program what what size it needs to be, and it makes it that size. So, this is one of the first things that they've made automatic. That's why I do the nightly build, because updates. <laughs> that, that's mostly what it is. Oh, and I forgot to... Uh, make sure that I hit enter on the command prompt because it uh, it did not quite finish because it couldn't <laughs> that was my um, that was my problem there sorry about that oh and the Mednafin core works wonders with this as well so So now that that is out of the way, 
what I'm going to do next will be uh, just one more thing. And it will be N64. So right now I'm just renaming the name of the game. Right, I'm trying to figure out what cart cartridge slot it is. And it's the middle one. In between all of those, it's the middle one. Sort of middle, somewhat. So now I'm searching for the N64 uh, script that I typed up quite a bit back. There we go. But yeah, just make sure you name, do, uh, well for this, uh, the N64, I would actually download the fake, um, the ROM from the internet, unless people have a list of the exact sizes for each ROM, someone really needs to create that list. Uh, maybe not me, but someone who knows a little bit more about all of this. And within the hex editor, you can get rid of the unwanted code off of GBA, Game Boy games, and as well as uh, N64 games. But I would set it to the correct size. And uh, for N64, the extension is N64 or Z64, even though it does, all the emulators will work no matter what it is. But you will need to set the N64 game to the correct size. Otherwise, you'll get something like, uh, well, what I'm about to show you. I, I speed it up just quite a bit because this will take some time. So yeah, I'm just moving around carefully and then speeding it up. Watches it flashes faster. Or not, it just doesn't flash. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> oh well. But yeah, it's going a little bit faster. Well, I don't need to be quiet on this. So I'm using the parallel core for the emulator because it is the better of the two. Because it, yeah, I'm saying because too much. But the reason why it's a better emulator is that on certain games, you will not hear any the sound will just be incorrect. It does not translate it correctly. And that is not the game's fault, that is the emulator's fault. And I've done multiple runs through all of these types of games multiple different times within the last couple of years. So I know exactly what ends up being wrong. Uh, it's been more than 16 tests. And that's where our hex editor comes into view. And you can always edit the text, um, the hex editor. Uh, well, edit within the hex editor just to get rid of the F values, uh, which I'll show you later on as it, it does appear. So, yeah. This is all the coding that. <laughs> uh, that Nintendo has done. But yeah, I'm mostly just going through and using the hex editor as a double check 
and that is just to check the size of the initial ROM. So I'm going to try a slightly larger, well, double the size. It will take a bit longer. I made sure that it doesn't take as long. But yeah, it it takes some time. Uh, yeah, I changed the file size. Sorry, my my computer loves to do that. I really need to turn off that mail function, but. <laughs> There we go. Now we run the bat file once again, or batch file, whatever anybody wants to name it. it. It's just a file extension. There we go. Since this is taking so long. But I'll see if I can get it so that the actual game is renamed to the game name. Hopefully sometime soon or if there's an update some within some matter of time are updated but there we go we use retroarch <laughs> once more we drag the game uh, right select our core and select OK and now we receive images uh, What? <laughs> There's no text. Yeah. Well, this is one of the things that happens if, and and this is if the ROM is not correctly, well, uh, ripped directly from the cartridge. So, but yeah, this is what happens. So. With, you know, I'm trying to look for the hex editor. It's not there. <laughs> yeah, it's right there. There we go. Now we drag that down. Get the window. Take our file. Drag it in. Go all the way to the end. And, oh look! <laughs> Didn't seem to have finished, so... We go back, click on it, yeah, exit out of that, and we go up double the size again. Well, you don't really have to. Uh, Mario Mario Party 2 is within 24 kilobytes, so as long as you do it within the 24 kilobytes, it should be fine. Uh, but if you do it larger it, it won't um, hurt the file it'll just be larger than initially known so yeah it, it won't hurt the file it, it's just adding more padding and so we increase the time again so let it run yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> That's my past self in there. <laughs> uh, he's doing his own thing. But yeah, th this does take quite a while, so it, I would say do something else in the meantime. So. so there we go. Done, done dumping the wrong, so. It doesn't do a check on this because uh, they haven't yet set it to find out the file size of each Nintendo 64 ROM. And uh, eventually they'll get to that point and make everything automatic. So, yeah. this one should work.
I know it works, but here we go. So there we go. The N64 ROM was done correctly. So, uh, and as you see there, there's the padding, the F values, which are basically just zero, I believe. Or there is zero or one. <laughs> but yeah, if you go to the end of the script on it, uh, on this exact file you'll see dots and after the dots I would say delete everything else if it has an F value or if they go in between and there's dots and F's and they're mostly just trying to use a little bit of padding so yeah that's mostly what this is so see those dots there that that's where the code ends after that all of that is fluff and what i mean by fluff is that all of that is unnecessary for the game to actually run so you can delete all that yeah this is why i say don't set it too high <laughs> But that is pretty much all, all I have for this video, and I will show you my uh, menu again in a second, so don't worry about that, and make sure to rename every single game that you do rip, and as I said before, I do not condone in any sort of illegal rip, ripping of the game and uh, putting it on any site. If you own the game, go ahead and rip it and don't uh, sort of sell it or do anything like that. All, all of these are property of Nintendo, Sega, uh, yeah, pretty much Nintendo and Sega for all of these games. And then the other various companies that are said within each and every title sequ sequence in every single game. So, yeah, so here's my menu. Our, our actually get you a newer version where it's more simplified and easier to edit. But I do hope you join me again on Tech Artist 41, and I hope to see you next time. Please subscribe if you have not <laughs> but yeah please subscribe uh, to this channel if you have not already uh, if you do want to see any of my other videos I will have links right here so I bid you farewell and I hope you have a good day during this pandemic and be safe wear a mask <laughs>